Okay, I put together a dozen shackles to send to you, red and green, and they'll come uh, looking like this. I just put a black cord on there to represent the sail stay that's going to run up to the mast there, and uh, that gets attached to the loop that's formed by the overhand knot. You also have a slip knot loop and a stopper knot at the end. It's best to uh, pass the stopper knot through the eye strap on the kayak deck from the outside towards the inboard on the kayak. Um, I found that everything just seems to, uh, line management just works better if you slide it in from the outside towards the inside. <clears throat> then you'll put it up here through the slip knot, like that. Lock down the slip knot, and you'll have your your shackle in place. <clears throat> It'll hold up real nicely while you're sailing. Then when you want to remove it, what you want to do is get, get a hold of your stopper knot, pull it out a little ways, and bend it back so you can hold both the stopper knot and the working end leading out of the stopper knot like that. Pinch that little loop there. Grab this extra long tail on the slip knot and give several sharp tugs. Slip knot opens right up. <clears throat> you need to open a little further. You can pull it through a little bit like that. And you remove your shackle like that. Okay, this video I'm going to show how to tie the knots to create a soft shackle uh, connection system for connecting the back stays and side stays of the Falcon sail rig to the pad eyes or the eye straps that are anchored to the edges of the uh, gunnels of your kayak. Um, you want to start with a piece of line that's about 32 inches long. Um, I'm using blue line here because black line doesn't reflect light very well and it's a little harder to see what I'm doing with the knots, so I'm just using some blue parachute cord here. Um, you want to start by tying the knot that's going to be the slip knot that closes the shackle that locks everything in place. We'll tie that one first and then we'll measure the lengths of line we need between knots and tie the other ones, uh, the other knots that are easier to adjust uh, their position. So to start with, we're going to take one end of this line and I'm going to, I want to have a, a good tail sticking out when I'm done and you'll see why that is. So I'm going to kind of come in away from the tail a little bit here and then I'm going to put a bite in the line like this. I'm going to lay that over the top like that and I'm going to bring it around the back of the loop like this. In fact, I don't have a long enough tail there. I want to come in a little further here. So I'm going to bring it over the top this way and around the back of the loop like this. So here's where we're at so far. No knots have actually been tied yet. This is really just all kind of coiled up on itself. Now I'm going to start sticking this tag end of the line into the loop that I've created right here, and I'm gonna do that twice. So here we go. I'm gonna stick it in once, wrap it around, stick it in a second time, <clears throat> like this. And I'm gonna kinda of pull it, pull it in there so that I have about a two to three inch tag line sticking out here. That's going to be important later. So this is what we have so far. This line comes in, we wrap it over the top of itself and behind the loop, then we coil around this line two times and finish by going through the loop and out the back side like that. And this is actually the beginning of what a fisherman would call a turl knot. This part would be threaded through the eye of a fish hook. Um, but now we're going to modify it a little bit so that it will uh, be a durable knot. It won't easily uh, uh, slide or come untied. And it'll provide a little bit of friction to the slip knot closure on our shackle system so that it will never release itself. So what we're going to do now as we pull this tight <clears throat> is we're going to take of these two coils right here and here. Get 
constant. We have one on the right, one on the left. We're going to take this left coil and we're going to flip it over the top of the right coil. Like that. So that they cross each other. So I took the left coil and I just moved it to the right, flipped it over the top of the, the right coil. And now that's the knot, that's the, the geometry of the knot that I want to keep as I tighten the knot down by pulling the tag end and this bottom portion of the loop right here. We want to watch that that knot holds that shape as we tighten it down. Okay, and now this knot right here is a permanent part of our system and we want that to be very, very tight. So um, you'll notice that I have a nice long tail here. I may trim this later, but uh, you'll see why I left a long tail there in a bit. So I'm going to take a pair of pliers or you could take a vise or something like that. But this is where we want to take these two ends here and really give them a good locking down. We want to lock that knot so that, <clears throat> so that that's not coming out of there. Now that knot is very hard. It's no longer soft like the rest of this line is. It's, it's very, very tight. And uh, what that now is providing us is a good amount of friction on this sliding part of the slip knot right here. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So this knot now can slide and this slip knot can close and it can open. And that knot there is never going to come undone. In fact, every time you open the knot, it tightens it more, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So we've got our, our slip knot, which is going to be the knot that closes around the neck of the stopper knot and closes our shackle. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is tie an overhand on a bite, and that's going to create a loop that we can connect the, sa the sail stay, the, the, the four stays, or the, excuse me, the side stays and the back stays are going to connect into the shackle with a knot that's the same stay adjustment knot that comes with the Falcon sail. Um, I'll show you what I mean by that. So now, um, in order to uh, measure from this knot to the next knot, we're going to close this loop all the way. And one of the nice things about this knot is you can never lose that loop. Some slip knots, if you pull the loop out, the knot is gone. This one, you can jam it all the way closed and the loop is still there. Might take you a while to get it, get it open again. There we go. But the loop doesn't go away, even if you jam it all the way closed. So we're gonna jam it all the way closed um, so that we can now measure to the next knot. And we wanna measure two and a quarter inches to where the next knot's going to begin, and that's going to be an overhand on a bite. And we want to shoot for this finished bite to be about one and a half inches. And I'll show you what I mean by all that here. So we'll go ahead and tie an overhand on a bite. This is the simplest knot you could tie just about. So it's just I took that loop and I <clears throat> tied it in an overhand knot so that it would create a a loop here and I can already, already tell that that part of the line is a little bit short right there. We want two and a quarter inches and we've got about one and three quarters of an inch. But the nice thing about the uh, the uh, overhand on a bite here is that we can simply make adjustments very easily. Even with the knot tied we can feed line into it from different directions and make adjustments. So <clears throat> overhand on a bite. And that looks like a better place to start for making our adjustments. So we want two and a quarter inches from the slip knot to the base of our overhand on a bite, which is about what we got right there. It's looking good. Pull that tight. That's another knot that never will come undone once you crank down on it. And then we want this loop here to be about an inch and a half. That's a little bit bigger. And uh, these measurements are just rough measurements. You just want to get kind of close. What's more important is once you build one of your four shackles, that you build the other ones 
to all have about the same dimension so that uh, everything looks nice and even on either side of your boat if you care about that sort of thing. So but this will be our prototype and then you would build your other four to, to match this one. So that looks good right there. And then the last knot that you need to tie is the stopper knot, the one that's going to get uh, trapped in this little slip knot here to close up the shackle. And for the uh, for that knot, we want to come down five and three quarters inches and have the knot be placed right about there. Now this knot is called an Ashley's knot or an Oysterman's knot. It's a large, bulky stopper knot that has a really pretty look to it when it's done. Um, it's a little, uh, it takes a little bit of practice to tie. It, there's a lot of internet online uh, tutorials for how to tie that. Just look up Ashley's knot or Oysterman's knot. Um, I'll show you the way that I approach it, and there's a lot of other ways that I've seen it explained online. So if this doesn't make sense to you, try try some of those. <clears throat> Take this line, and you're going to cross it in this direction across the front. So from left to right, over the top of the working end of the line there. Tag line's shooting out that direction. Okay, and I'm going to continue around the back until I've created this pretzel. Again, no knots have been tied yet. Not, nothing has gone through anything. It's all just a bunch of lines stacked on top of itself in this pretzel shape. Okay, so it comes up around the front and around the back. We've got this pretzel shape. Okay, then we take the tag end of that line and we're gonna bring it up in front of the pretzel. Bring it up in front of the pretzel and stuff it into the right ear of the pretzel. Stuff it into the right ear, bring it around the back and out the left ear, just like that. Made a pretzel, brought the tagline up, stuffed it in the right ear, go around the middle and out the left ear. And then tightening this down is a little different than most knots. I can't tighten this down just by pulling on these two ends. The knot will um, tumble and uh, not end up being dressed properly. So tightening this down means you have to kind of push all the loops together. So all the loops have to sort of be tightened into themselves at the same time. You want to kind of massage it down so that all the loops tie into each other this way. All at the same time. You don't want to just pull on each end. <clears throat> okay, and once you've got this uh, tied properly, the back of the stopper is going to look something like this, with a line coming out around the side here, and then going through a little bridge, sticking out to the side. And the other side of the stopper, and we'll continue to cinch this down a little bit, on the other side of the stopper, what you're going to see is this what's been described as a trefoil or a three-lobed design here. So it's kind of cool. There it is. So you see you got a lobe that's woven into the next lobe, which is woven into the next lobe, which is woven all the way around. One more time here. This lobe that dives into that one. This one comes out and dives into that one. This one comes around and dives into that one. So there's a three foil kind of design. And again, on the back, you've got a line coming up and around the side and going through a little bridge here and sticking out to the side if you've locked it down and dressed it properly. Okay, and then you want the measurement between, and we're gonna get that <clears throat> tight. Remember, you can't simply pull this end or this end to tighten this knot. You kind of have to keep pushing the loops into each other and shrinking the knot down by tugging a little and then kind of massaging the loops together and then tugging and then massaging the loops together until you have a nice compact little knot there. So you want the measurement between your overhand knot and your Ashley knot or your stopper knot to be five and three quarter inches, which mine is not. And if I wanted to take more time, I would untie this and retie it closer, do some trial and error, feed line in, take line out until I had five and three quarters of an inch. So this knot should actually be right about there.
Okay, this would actually be functional as it is. It would just be longer than it needs to be. And then finally, the operation of this system now <clears throat> goes like this. When you go to set up your, your sail, this end here is attached to your stays using the same knot that Falcon sends already put in its lines for sail stay length adjustment, okay, which looks like that. Okay, so here's, here's your sail stay coming off of your overhand on a bite right there. And if I wanted to adjust the length of the sail stay, all I need to do is pull in a little line and bring up the slack at the tag end or vice versa, let a little line out. So there's my, my stay going up there. <clears throat> now this piece of my line here is what's going to go through my shackle on my deck, excuse me, through the pad eye on the deck. So I have the pad eye and I would stick this uh, stopper knot through there. It's good to leave a little tail on the end because that's an easier target to thread through that pad eye. And then you can simply pull the stopper knot through the pad eye like this. And then we need to shut the shackle by sticking the stopper knot into the slip knot and then close down the slip knot like that bring those two knots together and you've got your soft shackle in place and you go sail nothing nothing really can can open while you're sailing nothing can get caught on anything um, you can't jam anything underneath your pad eye it's a it's a pretty um, pretty stable system uh, this is made out of nylon, the cord I'm using here, so it stretches a little, but the, poly, uh, the uh, polyester line won't stretch. And then when you go to open it, this is the cool part, you want to slide your stopper knot out a little bit so that you can grab this line to pull on. And then this is why you left this tag end a little long, get it three or four inches long so you can get a good grip and then give a good tug and it opens and the stopper knot comes out and you released it. So once again, stopper knot goes through the pad eye or the eye strap, feeds through the slip knot, crank it down, shackles locked, have fun, go sailing for a day, ready to take it apart, slide the stopper knot out so that you can grab both of these lines tightly, grab the tag end, give a good jerk or a good tug, <clears throat> knot is open, we're done sailing.